Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, and joining me today in the place of Matt Kleskowski, who, by the way, is on vacation in Hawaii. Painful. Painful, painful. Is Mr. R.C. Concepcion. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? I'm, I'm well. I'm not in Hawaii well, but I'm okay. <laughs> I've been... Uh, you just got back from New York. Uh, I did. I was up up at uh, Canon HQ all day yesterday with some buddies and a bunch, bunch of meetings, and it was really great. And uh, I, I almost didn't make it out of New York last night. What they happened? Terrible storms and stuff. But, and, like, we're looking at the Delta thing, and it's like, cancel, 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 Tampa. And so nice. we, we were very, very late, but we got in. So LaGuardia, JFK. LaGuardia. Did you see what they did with the terminal? It's like really nice, like the dining with the table. Oh, and they've got a little iPad on every table. I think yeah, it's pretty it's cool. Very nice. Anyway. So we, we tried yesterday. We were we we're at these meetings at Canon, and we actually brought up the idea of leaving and going to your brother's restaurant. So RC's brother's got a restaurant on Long Island, and we wanted to go there. And what was interesting was one of my buddies at Canon has already been there. Really? He's like, yeah, we went there. We went from the kids. This place is great. I'm like, I keep hearing how great it is. And then they brought in sandwiches. And I was like, I wanted to go to RC's. No. I know. RC sent me the dress and everything. But anyway, uh, we're glad to have you guys here. We have a very, very special guest today. Uh, uh, Lindsay Adler's here, and she mm -hmm. is a very, very famous fashion photographer. She's a tremendous educator. And when she was on the grid last year, she lit it up. It was crazy. The comments that we got, it was one of the most watched episodes of the year, and uh, people just love her. She's got great insights into the, the business side of things and mm -hmm. the, the uh, all kinds of stuff. We have a kind of an interesting topic, and... Uh, we have a couple of mini topics, but I think the big topic today is is when does inspiration become copying? Yeah. So we're going to talk about that because uh, we we've got a wild she's got a wild story about that, uh, and of course we got all kinds of giveaways and fun stuff too. All right, all right. Now, if you're following the conversation right now, make sure that you go to Twitter, go to Twitter.com, and you can leave us your comments at hashtag the Grid Live. So we're also following the chat. We've got 122 people in here. We got people from Irving checking in from Irving, Texas. Lindsay is smart, says so Scott King. Yes, well, Scott King, you can't he, really go by He's a little snarky, that. I guess. He's very snarky. Okay, hi, Brad and Pete. They're checking in from Southwood, Virginia. So this, this show is something that is largely based on the type of feedback that you guys give us for this on the live side. So if you have a comment, if you have a question, make sure that you leave it up there. Brad is here monitoring those comments and putting yeah, this and on the Yeah, don't just sit us. there on the sideline. Go ahead and get in the chat and, and become a part of the conversation today. Also, if you would take a moment right now while you're in here to go on Twitter or go on any of those places, and of course, as RC said, just tell people. Hey, the grid's just starting. Normally, I will put all, all kinds of tweets and stuff all day long, and mm -hmm. I haven't even done a tweet yet. I'll try to do it on the break. I've just been in, I've been in one long, nonstop meeting since the moment I got here this morning, so I'm, I'm, I'm whining. Hey, <laughs> Thursday night, Thursday night, come join us. We're doing a very fun thing next Thursday. Oh, wow. It nice. is next Thursday, right? It's not tomorrow. God, I hope not. It's a week from Thursday. Yes, Photoshop Worldathon. Yeah, we're doing a Photoshop Worldathon. Yeah. We did this last year, and what we do is uh, all the gang here and some of our instructors are going to share little bits of what they're teaching at Photoshop World. Nice. And kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. It's free. You're going to learn a ton of Photoshop tips, nice. photography tips, all kinds of stuff. It's all about tips. Really, it's a, a giant tip fest, um, but it is from the crew at Photoshop World. So that's right. next Thursday, 7 p.m., somewhere here. In our studios. In this general area. So, also, for the giveaways today, we have the Lighted Shooter Retouch a Book from Mr. Scott Kelby himself. So, That's one me, of you guys Mr. is going to win this. When, Mr. The <laughs> Man. Me Mr. <laughs> it feels so special. <laughs> and one of my favorite people, I love Ibarian X, Chasing the Light, Improving Your Photography of Available Light by Ibarian X Perello, the host of the oh, Candid Frame. Oh, yeah, he's very frame. good. He's terrific. So hey, we'll, also, we, we'll get something. We'll get one of Lindsay's books to give away too, because Lindsay, oh. Lindsay's got some terrific books. Nice. Didn't, okay. She did a great book with Eric Valland, How to Shoot in and not so not the perfect type of. They used a naughty word, but they didn't actually write it out. They like S H, and then on like an apostrophe and, and like an asterisk and stuff, stuff. But anyway, it's How to Shoot in Light. Uh, that was that was really good, and she's got a class on it at Kelby One. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, actually, she's down here. Actually, she's here. She's here to do some classes. Class. Yeah, she is. And so um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But anyway, she's here today. We're gonna have a great show. Uh, go tell your friends when we take this break. I'm gonna try to real quickly zoom over to Twitter. Don't look at what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm gonna try to real quickly go over to, to Twitter to Twitter. Twitter, and I'm going to try to tweet something really quick. Okay, why am I getting a phone call on the they're probably, show? They're probably telling you not to tweet while you're doing this. Don't tweet. 
All don't right. tweet. But basically, just, said, just tell people. Look, tell people that this is on KelbyTV.com. All right. Slash or the Kelby, Kelby Kelby1.com one. slash The Grid. Sure. There we'll, you go. we'll be right back with Lindsay Adley being <laughs> joining us in just a second. Don't go away. with red. Red is arresting. It's eye-catching. People can go anywhere, beautiful headshots, nice portraits. But what I like to do is give them something a little more. Have a concept. I like to tell a story. As a professional portrait and fashion photographer, I like to take the elements of fashion photography and apply them to my portrait and wedding work. We'll cover locations, props, hair and makeup, just a lot of different elements that you can apply to your work and really stand out from the crowd. Fashion Flair is not ordinary, it's exciting. Hey everybody, we're back and look who has joined us on the set, Miss Lindsay Adler. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. If we had a studio audience, there'd be a lot of applause going on, but they'll they'll put that later in post. <laughs> <laughs> Massive. Adorable. Hey, thank you for being here. Thank you. You were such a hit on last year's show, and I don't want to put pressure on you for today, oh, but no. I'm doing that to put pressure on you. But I think that she's already delivered right before we started. And we were sitting here. We're working on kind of the content and things that we're talking about for the show. And she's like, I've got a couple of little things that I wrote down. And just, she's like, how about this or this? And Scott's like, that's it. That's right it. there. Of course, we, we were talking about something I thought was kind of shocking. But but before we get to today's topic, can I, can I interrupt for one second? Mm -hmm. All right. So look. So this is now... This is a weird chain of events that brought Lindsay here today because you realize I, I'm like working on a bunch of other stuff. Like mm -hmm. I'm, and, and I have this this big shoot that I'm literally doing tomorrow. It's completely unrelated to Lindsay. It's a fashion shoot, even though Lindsay's here. But it, I'm doing this shoot, and it's for a project for my book. Okay. And so I wanted to do this project, and I wanted to do it really right. And I, and I, I I get tired of shooting on white seamless and gray seamless and all this kind of stuff. So I I, I sit Brad down. I go, Brad, let's do something big. And he's like, okay. And I go, look, we're going to do this whole thing. And I'll, and I said, well, let's, let's, we need to get like some, some amazing styling for this outfit. Because I mean, when it comes to fashion, as Lindsay has taught me many times, it really comes about the outfits and the styling and the clothing and the accessories. Well, Lindsay started this company called Dream Shoot Rentals. And so I know you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about this anyway. <laughs> she doesn't like me to talk about it. Anyway, she started, she's an, an entrepreneur. She started this company called Dream Shoot Rentals. And I'm just explaining this the way I see it. Okay. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But, but the problem is our, our studios are in Tampa, Florida. And we put them here because we wanted to find a really extremely hot, humid place to put our offices. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're based down in Tampa, Florida. Uh -huh. it, it, you can't find high fashion clothing in Tampa, Florida. It, it, I, I, I'm not trying to say anything bad about Tampa. It's a wonderful place. And I know that people would, would that live here would argue that. Oh, you haven't been to this place. You haven't been to the place. It's cute. It ain't New York. <laughs> so what Lindsay has done, the idea behind her company, I think it's so brilliant, is she is in New York. She goes and finds these amazing fashions, these amazing accessories, these amazing things that I you would only see in New York. Crazy things for their hair and all this stuff. She put up a, a, a site. You can go there and say... There's an amazing dress I've never seen before, and she will rent it to you, and will ship it to you and rent it to you. So all of our dresses just came in. Uh, the three we, I, I ordered three different things um, from the site. They all came in today, and Brad's been busily steaming <laughs> all day long. But uh, for this shoot tomorrow, this, and, and it was, it, I swear I didn't. I, none of this was based on me really knowing that you would be here. But anyway, 
her stuff is amazing. So go to go. You can go to follow her on Facebook. So facebook.com slash dreamshoot rentals or just type in on Google dreamshoot rentals or just go to dreamshoot rentals dot uh-huh. com. And you'll and you'll see that. And she and, but this is great because you're giving people access to stuff unless you're in New York City and unless you have a huge budget, they would never have. Totally. Did, did I describe it right? Is that's that, perfect. I that, thank you. That well, was no, really just, great. No, but that's it's so great. No, that's exactly it. Because I wanted to do fashion from yeah, years ago, and I ended up getting a lot of H and M clothing, and then I would like tape stuff on and like try to make it look high fashion, and it just didn't work. Um, and I'm not that crafty either. Like I'm not somebody that can sew or make things. Um, so every time I teach everything that I do, I try to teach things that I wish existed when I was first getting into photography. So I was like, well, why not extend that into other problems that I have? When I was trying to do cool fashion shoots or stylized portraits, I didn't have access to cool clothing and hats or, yeah, you can find some of them online, but they're like $1,000 for this amazing hat. Who wants to buy it? You're not going to use it again. Yeah, it's one one shoot and right. you're done with a $1,000 hat. Now what do you do? Right. D- it makes no sense. So that's why I started the company. And it's kind of awesome because I get to shop for avant-garde dresses and hats all day. Like that's... Not that's too a cool. Shabby. That's a cool job. I like, yeah. I like my day like that. Yeah, I know. Cool. RC does all that, but, but you I know, it's a great that. resource for photographers. So I know that's not we were, we're. It's not our topic. It's not what we're going to talk about. But it, I, I'm one of your clients. I'm in the middle of this right now. Now, Brad has been talking. Who have you been talking to at Dream Shoot? Brad, who's your client? Kathleen. Kathleen. Yeah. So he's been. He, Brad's having. But I, I got to pick the dresses. Well. My wife Calibra really helped. I'm not really. I'm not. I'm not good at that stuff. But it's. It, you know what it is like. It's kind of. If you ask me, Scott, what kind of dress should you have for a shoot? I swear I have no idea. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. But if you show me it, I can go. Oh well, that's a cool dress. So you've narrowed it down. But even when I got there, I, I turned the thing to, to my wife. Calibra. She's got a great sense of style, and I went. Can you just? Tell me what to do, and she's like, "Oh, that's that's the one." I but mean, I think she was five seconds in. She's like, "Honey, that's it. That's uh-huh. that's the dress." That's but great. that's. But I think that that's one of the secrets in when you're working with photography, when you're working with anything in creative. Is I think when we first start, our our goal is to try to be able to own as much of the process as possible. You start as a photographer, you're like, "All right, I got it. There's going to be this, and I see this scene, and I see that, and I see this," and. As you start doing it more and more, you start realizing that it really is kind of a team effort. Like when you go out and you do it, you okay. need a good hit, you need a good makeup person, you need a good stylist, you need a good location scout. Like you can't just jump into a scenario and go, oh, I got it. And it's when all of those pieces come together that all of a sudden you start executing really, really good pictures. So I think that that's having a service like that where you can kind of do that everywhere, I think is really, really good. I'm, I'm very excited about it. And uh, I am kind of spoiled because any of the pieces I get, I get to shoot whenever I want. So uh. it's like, it's, it kind of feeds into me as well. But I, I think it'll be great because I think it feeds a, a need that's out there. So I'm more than excited. Well, cool. anyway, the process has been great. Brad, Brad's been just thrilled with... Uh, uh, working with Kathleen. Do you want to know a secret about that? You know who Kathleen is, right? No. My mom. I hired my mom. Jan- no, it's <laughs> your That's mom. Awesome. I hired my mom. Your January mom's 1st. awesome. Your mom wow. is awesome. Anyway, <laughs> so, but, hi, but, mom. but hats off to you for number one, having the idea. Number two, it's a service for the photographic community. Mm-hmm. Number three, it gives us access to stuff we just couldn't afford any other way. And so you're awesome. Now we're moving on. Thanks. Okay. Um, I do want to mention something before we move on to, to Lindsay. Today on my blog, um, my guest blogger, Hilmar Smith. Hilmar. Hilmar is, I, I think I said a few episodes ago, she's like, she gets my vote for up and coming photographer of the year. In the last year, she has transformed her work and she does everything from shooting Ferraris to shooting beauty. And anyway, she's, she's really just an awesome person and uh, a really great photographer. So we were thrilled to have her on the guest blog today. So if you get a chance when, they're, when you're done with the show, don't go look at it right now because we have a show. <laughs> but when the show's over, make sure you go by my blog at scottkelby.com and check out Hilmar's post. Now, so we were talking with Lindsay uh, right beforehand, and she was talking about some things that we were going to talk about today. And she told me something that, while it makes perfect sense, you know my jaw kind of dropped when she yeah. said this. So we were talking about shooting fashion editorials, and you were just a Marie Claire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, nice job, Marie Claire. Thank you. All right. So, <laughs> But she told me something about that shoot, and I was like... The first part of it made my jaw drop, and the second part of it made me go, oh, that makes perfect sense. So um, when you do a big shoot for a mag- big magazine like that, mm-hmm. you get paid 20000 50000 100000 Most of the time, you don't get paid a dime. 
See, this is where my jaw <laughs> dropped. I'm like, surprise. Well, because I think a lot of photographers out there, right? That would be their goal if I could get Marie Claire, man. But but there's there's a reason. Yeah. Well, okay. So there's there's kind of two parts to this. So most of the time, you don't get paid a dime, especially for any like up and coming magazines or mid sized ones, uh, because. It is treated as your advertisement to yourself, for yourself. So what you're trying to do is reach target clients. So let's say that I have, um, I'm in Marie Claire, and I'm trying to get all those advertisers in Marie Claire because that's where the money is. The money is in the advertising. So when I produce a beautiful editorial in Marie Claire, those same advertisers are checking out their ads and they're looking and saying, oh, this photographer, this style is exactly what I want. So you get paid almost nothing for that editorial, but you might get tens of thousands for an ad that they'd hire you for. And just so you know, the Vogue's, the Marie Claire's, the Harper's Bazaar, they do pay, like, I, I got a few hundred for the, the, oh. the Marie Claire thing. But usually, like, a Vogue, it's it's a couple a couple thousand. Right. But putting uh, putting but that together, I know. But in our, but in our minds, when you think of Vogue, right. when you think of Vogue, I think yeah. you got to spread in Vogue. I'm thinking making it rain. Twenty five, yeah, making it rain. Yeah, you're thinking mm -hmm. twenty five grand. I mean, seriously, I remember when I heard what what Sports Illustrated was paying for the cover was twenty five hundred bucks. Yep. I was like, mm -hmm. that's the cover of Sports Illustrated. That's like. That's like winning an Oscar. That's like you should get a, a tremendous amount of money. I heard but Time Magazine covers are paying like two fifty. No, is Time down yeah. to two hundred and fifty dollars? That's what I heard at one point. Somebody was talking to me about it. And somebody told you straight time up. Time cover huh? was Time cover uh, use of it for Time yeah. cover was like two fifty. <gasps> I was like, it's Time Magazine. Okay, but but Lindsay makes a great point here, and and so so you're sh there's something different about editorial, and, I, and I've noticed this, and you notice. The photographer's name is on the spread. Large and in the beginning. Yep, it says photographs by or, uh, photos by Lindsay Adler. Mm -hmm. If if Joe McNally is hired and and Joe does a lot of commercial work, let's say he he does a lot, he's done a lot of things for FedEx over the years. You ever see a FedEx ad that says photo by Joe McNally? Never. When you actually do get the money, you don't get the <laughs> name. Right. So they are kind of putting out a. a Check out what Lindsay can do in the magazine where you're already advertising. So I, sure. I can see how that would be an invaluable. I can also see why every photographer would line up to do it for free. Because once you're in that magazine, mm -hmm. your foot's, you're not in the door. You're sitting in the office. Well, and so here's how it works, too. So if you look at the advertising rates to have an ad in one of these magazines, it might be twenty or thirty or $40,000. So that 10-page spread, and I'm talking about for a spread in that magazine. Right. So if you have six or seven or eight pages with your name associated with that, it's way more value than what you're what you're exchanging for. So, so okay. So here's the thing. Um, there's a couple examples I've seen where this has worked out brilliantly. So one of my favorite photographers, um, his name's Tim Walker, and he does like really surreal and dreamy fashion photography. And I got really upset once um, because I saw this editorial. I believe it was for. I think it was for British Vogue, and he had a picture, and there's this girl on the top of a staircase, and she has a long train. If you've seen it, it's of Lily Cole. Like, if you've seen it, you know it. It's gorgeous. So, like, six or eight months later, I open up a magazine, I look at this ad, and it's for a perfume company, and it's a girl at the top of a staircase with a long blue dress, but it's lit differently, and it's a different model. And I'm like, holy crap, someone's ripping him off. Like, this is too close. This is too identical. And then I looked at his website, and he shot it. I guarantee you he oh. made $100,000 off that picture. I guarantee you. Good for him. Because High five. He's, he's stealing from himself. So so that's perfect. So that's what you're trying so to he, do. So basically his editorial was his test. Right. Like well, he yeah. showed up and he was just like, I got this idea. It's this spirally well, thing. Yeah, but you know what? Go. The client probably said, I, want I that. love this that. picture. Can right. you do that for my ad? So, I mean, that's cool. He, he you know. Anyway, it, it was a, a moment right before we went in the air where I was like, Mm-hmm. And I was just like, we got to talk about that. But but that's not our topic for today. We are going to take a break in just a minute. So we're going to take a break. But uh, before we do, because we're going to come back with this topic about uh, when inspiration becomes copying or when uh, imitation becomes copying, we're going to talk about that. And Lindsay's got a, a, a very interesting story about this. In fact, so interesting. You should go tell people to come watch now because this is going to be it's going to be a great show. Uh, so while we take this break. I don't know. I kind of like you to watch the ads because that's how we pay for the show. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty much it. Wow. So stick around. Take a yeah, look just watch the ads. If you're here, you're here. Take a look at this very interesting <laughs> ad coming up next. Uh, yeah. yeah, this next ad, it's engaging. It's, it's, I don't even know what it is. But anyway, there's so much they don't tell us here, you know? 
we're just, we, we're here and they make us sit here. Anyway, we're very excited to have Lindsay Adler live here in the studio. Don't go away. We have a whole lot more, including a wild topic right after this break. Don't go away. MPix Pro, the full service online photography lab, helping you grow your business with pro quality photo products and stellar services. Get started at mpixpro.com. Hey everyone, my name is Matt Kleskowski, and I want to let you know that we've put together a Lightroom Mobile Launch Center over at Kelby One. Ever since the iPad came out, there's really been one overwhelming request from Lightroom users, and that's Lightroom integration with the iPad. Well, it's here, and it's called Lightroom Mobile. We put together a launch center with videos, tips, links, and FAQs to help you get up and running with it. And don't forget, the launch center, it's really just the tip of the iceberg. We hope that you'll check out the hundreds of courses and videos that we have over at Kelby One that teach you Lightroom, Photoshop, photography, and, and really all things creative. So head over to Kelby One, check it out. Welcome back everybody, RC here for The Grid. Now listen, we're gonna to get to the topic here, but before we do, I also wanna point out that we have a couple of new classes that are out on the Kelby One website. So make sure that you go to kelbyone.com. We've got a great inspirational interview with the one and only Mr. Jeremy Coward. He is the person behind Help Portrait. He is a painter, he's an artist, and he has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with everybody right here on the Kelby One website. Make sure that you take a look at it. That's gonna be live around uh, July 17th. So you probably won't see it on the page. You should see it there, I would say at this point tomorrow. But um, yeah, Thursday. Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal artist. Oh yeah, he's awesome. He's so. awesome. <laughs> All right. Hey, one, one more thing too. This is unrelated to what we're doing, but um, Smug Mug uh, did the series of. So, well, Smug Mug did a really cool thing. All right, and this is they're, they're not really one of our advertisers. Are they one of our advertisers? Uh, I'm hoping. Anyway, <laughs> if they're not, maybe if you're listening, Smug Mug, no. But Smug Mug did this really really cool thing. They go and they and they do. Uh, like a mini documentary on Smug a photographer. Smug Mug Films. Smug Mug Films, it's called, and it's on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and go to Smug Mug Films. And they did one on Jessica Ambat shooting Air to Air that was amazing. Oh, anyway, yeah. But the guy that does it, this guy Anton, Anton. is unbelievable. He's like the guy like that. We that, love Anton. Oh, <laughs> Anton's the most unbelievable. But anyway, they just released a new one today. I got an email about it. They just so this one's featuring photographer Chris Burkhardt, all right? And the... The name of the movie, and these are, these are short, they're small, is called Arctic Swell, Surfing the Ends of the Earth. And number one, if you just like video, if you just like to see really nicely produced video, mm -hmm. go check out Anton's work. He is insane, and he's just the greatest guy. And by the way, can I tell you something about Anton? He, he shoots it, he directs it, he does the interviews, he does every single He's a one-man job. If it's, if it's an underwater photographer, I kid you not, he's underwater, he's right. getting housing. If he does, he's a one-man, he's just one of the most talented young young men out there. Anyway, but go check that out over at Smugbug. They got some really cool stuff. All right, are you ready for a topic? I'm ready for a topic. This I was just showing them the end. I was showing them the Smugbug film gorgeous. thing. So yeah, look, it looks like just, Discovery Channel. He's one guy. How does he do it? Yeah, he's amazing. I, I always said like, if I ever want like a bio thing or something like that, I'm like, I want Anton. I want Anton to do it. So <laughs> hey, if amazing. you go there, I got one of those. They did one on yeah, me. Yeah, they Anton did do one, did one on, on you. me. So if you're there, at least you know. Yeah, look here. Take a look. They're short. We'll They're just like do a, you know four minutes. YouTube.com slash user slash Smugmug Films, and you can see it there. So there he is. Or just go to Google and type in Smugmug Films, Smug and you'll films, find it. Right, Sarah Lee. Von Wong's was really, really nice. Oh, yeah, Von Wong's was great. Jessica Ambox. They did one with Devin Supertramp, another guy who's really, really good on there. You're in here Joel as well. Grimes is Joel in there. Grimes. So he, amazing. He, oh, he's, he's, he's so good. Okay. Great so, so Lindsay had, you had this happen to you about a year ago. Mm hmm. So maybe you can kind of just lead us in and tell the story because this was quite controversial. It's something you put up on your Facebook page. Yeah. And you just reshared it just now, but we'll, yep. I think we'll be able to show it on screen in a minute here. Yep. But this was a kind of controversial thing. And the topic is when does ins inspiration become uh, copying? Because we all look at other photographers' Absolutely. work. Every time I'm about to do a shoot, I look at all kinds of photographers' work. Mm -hmm. I have a fashion shoot tomorrow and I, I went and watched your, your one of your Kelby One classes. I'm, I'm straight up, I did. You know, I really wanted to see what lens you were using. I'm like, what lens is she using, you know? Awesome. Because anyway, I love your work, and Thank as you, you know. And so uh, I wanted to watch your class. And, but, but, but I've been looking at all kinds of images and all kinds of different ideas. I, I'm not gonna be able to recreate anything else I saw, and, and I don't want to. 
but I want to be inspired by it. And and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this happened to you in a, in a kind of an I think an unfortunate way. So last year. Okay. Um, so what ended up happening is a friend of mine uh, sent me a Facebook message and said, hey, isn't this your photo? And in the Facebook message, I typed in yes and then stopped and deleted. And what I noticed is it was a photo that I actually, at first glance, thought was my own photograph. Um, but it, it wasn't. Um, so I did a beauty shoot, a beauty editorial last, I believe it was last February. Um, and so it's a beauty shot of a girl with flowers all around her face. Okay, how many times has a beauty shot been done with a girl with flowers around their face? A million, billion times. I almost like, bought a flower for you for my beauty headshot that I'm doing after this. I almost exactly. did. But I was just going to have one covering an eye, which has been done to death. I yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't be breaking any new ground there. And, and I actually did for my for my Kelby one that I filmed uh, yesterday. Um, it was directly inspired by another shot. You know, that idea with a headpiece and, you know, uh, high contrast lighting. Okay, well, when I go ahead and I do a shoot, how I get inspiration is I'll definitely look at other photographers' work for sure, but I pick and choose from a bunch of different photos. I like the lighting from this one and the hair and makeup from this one and the styling, and so I try to put it together that way. Anyway, the reason that this was so striking to me is upon first glance, I thought it was my own photograph. I thought it was mine. So you're looking at yeah, can it. Can we show it? Can we bring it up it on screen? Connect. Oh, I didn't connect. Sorry, I lost my connection. One second. They're probably like, hey, where are you? Sure. Well, so looking at it, um, I thought the things that looked similar to me was it was similar lens choice, right? Similar lighting placement. By the way, I'm ripping off your lens choice tomorrow. Go ahead. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> similar flower placement, similar eye color, similar retouching. So it was to me. Yeah, look at the eye color. Very, very, very similar. And, and uh, the subject even has blue eyes. Both subjects have blue eyes. So the question that I asked, and I, I will tell you, I was not by any means mad at this person. It was not a, you know, an anger. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, everybody tell this person to take their photo down. It was nothing like that. But the question I posed, is there a difference between inspiration and just plain copying? And, and how do you decide that line? Because for example, there's a, a shoot that I did. It was a fine art nude shoot and it's a girl dancing and she's covered in flower and flowers going everywhere. Well, it was inspired by a picture that Lois Greenfield did. Uh, it's a guy, he's jumping, he's all balled up, and there's powder puffing off of him. Epson used it for an ad. Okay. So if you've seen it, you know it. It was a nude form with powder everywhere. And I shot a nude form with powder everywhere. It's th the same concept is there. So was I copying that I took it? What, like, at what point is that line drawn? For me, personally, if I were this close to someone else's image, I would feel that I hadn't added enough to call it my own, but that's that's just me. So I'm posing that question to everybody. Like, what what do you, what do you think? Well, here's here's what I number one. I think, and I'm going to ask you, Lindsay, and you can answer this question. Sure. When when they always say, well, their, their imitation is the greatest flattery, or whatever you know, mm -hmm. imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Right. When you think someone's copied your photo exam exactly, do you mm -hmm. feel flattered? I I almost actually feel more confused. Um, because as photographers, we're, we're artists, and I feel like you'd want to add your own twist to it. Like, I, every shoot that I do, I want to bring something of me to that image. And so it's more like, I'm glad you like it, but what did, what did you contribute? Right. So I'm looking at these two pictures, and, and, and neither Lindsay or I are saying that this woman ripped her off. We're, we're, she just, we're just putting the topic out yep. there. But, it, like, for example, let's just say that you didn't use three flowers. Because the idea of using a flower with a beauty headshot, a million times done. Million times right. done. I, I did it. I've done it on stage on my light to shoot a retouch it to her years ago. Uh, we used to get a, a, a Gerber Daisy. No, yeah, Gerber Daisy. That's right. I keep thinking Gerber. It's Gerber, Gerber Daisy, and we would have the model hold it over one eye and stuff. So it, it it's been done, and and I did, I wasn't the first. I was the five thousands. Mm -hmm. So the idea of using a flower in a beauty headshot is not what you're talking about. But the very the arrangement here. The color of the, I mean, it, it's, it, I don't know what, if you were trying to copy Lindsay's, I don't know what you would do different than the, than that person did. And so they did a great job. They it's did, a good photo. yeah, it's a good photo. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're capable of making that good a photo, you need to remove a flower, change the eye. It, you need to do something, like you said, to make it your own. What did you do to add to it or make it better? Because just like you said with the flower. It, it, because you don't want to, you don't, we don't want to become in, in, in a situation where, all right, someone did a flower of a nude guy with, with uh, powder. No one can do another nude powder sure. shot. We don't want that. And we don't want to say somebody did a, held up a flower in a beauty shot. We can never use a flower anymore. Right. 
But because I, I, I was given RC this, we were talking right before we went on the air, it's about guitar. When you were first learning guitar, the way you learn guitar is to copy every guitar solo note for note. Mm -hmm. Like right. you'll learn the guitar solo for Walk This Way and you'll learn it every, you'll learn it exactly like he plays. You'll it. slow it down so you right. can learn it. You'll learn it, yeah. And by the way, can I tell you something? There's this software called Guitar Pro. <laughs> can I, it's the mo and seriously, I wish we had this for photography. It will take the solo. You will, you will go download free sheet music for it and it will play it and you can highlight just the solo and it will play the solo at 50% speed and then you can say, every time we play it, increase it 1% or wow. 2% until you get up to speed. Huh. So you're, go you're sitting there going and then five minutes later you're going and then by the end you're up to speed. It's amazing, it does all the math, it keeps everything in pitch, it's crazy, but that has nothing to do with what they're talking about. But you're, you, you spend your time learning these and so you learn Joe Perry's guitar solo. When you go to record your album, you don't play Joe Perry's guitar solo. You are inspired by it. You learn things to do. You're going to take little parts, little licks, the way you do hammer-ons or whatever, and say, oh, I like that, and I like this other one, and I like this other thing, and I like this other solo I learned, right, from Stevie Ray Vaughan, and then you create your own style. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to do as photographers. We're supposed to be inspired. That's why we look at all these images. We're supposed to go, oh, man, I want to do a beauty headshot. I want to use some flowers. But I can't do it just like Lindsay did it. It's been done. You gotta I need, put your I need, fingerprint. Uh, on it. Yeah, I need to bring something to it. And so now, what, what I think is interesting about this is because there's another discussion here, Lindsay. That is, is when you showed this side by side comparison, and it's it's, I mean, the only thing that you could say is different is that the image is flipped. Right. Right. In other words, her flowers covering. But I mean, it's it's very very similar. I'm not saying that she, but was the reaction people gave you. So it, it's really interesting. I have so many different thoughts on all of this because I'll let you know, I absolutely look at a ton of other people's photos and I definitely have that same moment where I go, okay, well, will this be too similar? So it's not cut and dry. So I posted this and I was really surprised because it was about 50-50, um, very 50-50 on half the people said that I was a terrible person for bringing it up, for in, the bringing first place. It up in the first place because I teach. So this... You know, another example is uh, one of the things I teach, I love this technique, uh, it's called displacement maps. And so what you actually do is you wrap textures around a person's face. And so tons of my students have shown me the work that they've done wrapping textures around the face. And the one that I teach is flowers. So when a student shows me a picture of a girl with the flowers wrapped on her face, I'm not angry. I want people to learn. I want people to experiment. No problem. Like, I'm a teacher. But what I, I was surprised at is a lot of people were upset saying, since you teach your techniques, we can rip you off if we want. You're making money off of educating us so we can copy you if we want. And then the other half said, no, this girl's way too close to come up with your own ideas. And people were actually, I thought there were very few measured responses and there were very extremes and very emotional. So I was very surprised by that. I, I, I'm very surprised about it as well. And, and can I give you an example? So yeah. I was, I sat in one of Lindsay's classes. She spoke for us at the Google Plus Photographers Conference in San mm -hmm. Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that she was coming up on, on the uh, venue. And I think it was the only class I sat through in the entire three-day event. But I sat in the audience, and I sat there taking notes. Not only did I take notes, but I took pictures of the stage. Because you did, I think, it, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly, but seven different fashion lighting setups. Mm -hmm. and, she did a lighting setup I had never seen before, never had seen before, where I, I like, for example, I'm doing a beauty shoot today. I, I do a beauty shoot and uh, you know with a uh, beauty dish up top, I put a, a, a soft box at the bottom, and I will usually put a large soft box behind tip back at a 45 degree to bring the, the but people do it all different ways. But I saw you do a, a thing with two big soft boxes side by side, just like in front, not one on top and bottom, but literally yours were on the side and and it had a different look. It was still a, a classic beauty shot. It was still the classic beauty look but it was just a different take on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was like two weeks later, I was doing the exact same thing, but I'm using a different model, I'm using different hair, different poses, all that kind of stuff. I'm not trying to create the, the, the shot you did, but now I'm able to learn, you, t you showed me, you taught me, here's, where, here's another way to get a different light. That's what I'm trying to do. But when you're actually saying, here's Lindsay's lighting, and here's the picture Lindsay took, so, put your shoulder like this, and I need to get this hair, and I, you know what I mean? It, it, that's where it crosses the line. That's where I think it goes from, 
from using one of your photos or your ideas as teaching. You taught me that lighting effect. I think that if you saw me using that lighting setup, you'd go, oh, I never yeah. used it in my class. Good exactly. for you. High five. Mm -hmm. But if you saw me doing this picture with someone holding three flowers, you'd go, oh, that's not good. <laughs> here's here's some, and I was just thinking about this, and here's, and I don't know what the right answer is for this, hmm. but is it a question of perception? Okay, because for me, I think one of the things that I tell people all the time is I'm a teacher first. Right, so I teach for, like my day job is teaching. Could it be that people see you as a teacher first before a pro photographer or a photographer, mm -hmm. or that you put yourself in a scenario where let's just say, let's use McNally as an example, right? Mm -hmm. McNally happens to be a photographer that happens to teach. Could it be that in some cases it's seen the other way around? And I'm not sure if it is or isn't, mm -hmm. but could that be the case? Are you asking me or something? I don't know. So, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Nobody gave me any crap. It was her. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, they lit her up. So part, part of this as well is the idea of, okay, so let's say that someone looks at one of my photos and identically copies it for, is there a difference between if they identically copy it for educational purposes versus marketing purposes? Like, That's is there a line the there? Oh, there is a so, line. There is because a very big what, line. What, what they do when they're doing it for educational purposes, they're learning the guitar solo note for note. Right. You're supposed to do that. And I would love to be able to recreate one of your shots and dead on and nail it. But, and, and we've done that before. Brad and I have done that. We've sat in the studio and we're like, get it just like it. Look, all right. But then you have that moment where you stop and you're not going to show anybody that. That's the educational part. Okay, I got that look. Now, now is when you turn the dial, and now you're going to put your fingerprint on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I'm seeing something on yeah, our Hilmar just like, oh. oh, on the chat. Hilmar just pointed, just showed this. I'm going to try to. I, this might bump you off, but um, uh, somebody just uh, she she said something along the lines of, "I, I like this ripoff of RC shot," and I don't. Can see you show this. your first shot? Oh. Uh, yeah, here. Oh, this, it could yeah. be just coincidence. I, I don't know, but see, I didn't see this as, I didn't see this as a ripoff. I thought that this was a really nice. An homage. I thought it was a tip of the hat. I thought it was kind of neat that, that, that he did that. And what happened is I actually talked to the person afterwards. Um, somebody had pointed it out. They sent it over to me and they were just like, oh, take a look at this. Take a look at this thing here. Um, yeah. Somebody's First, doing let's see this. your shot, which yeah. is, this is a classic shot. Look at this. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's that's my that's shot. That's RC's shot. And it is that that is just the most adorable and and that so RC's this is what's interesting about this shot. So RC's wife is a ballerina, as we've heard many times before <laughs> on the show. I married a ballerina. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. And this is his daughter Sabine, who is the just she is oh, beautiful. she was very young there and she's she's older now, but she's every bit as cute as that today. Oh, I mean thanks. she's just the most adorable mm -hmm. little girl. But this was such an amazing shot because this is a little girl looking up at her mom, the ballerina, and it's just but it's I'm such sure it's a been genuine moment. Though. But this but but this happened organically for you yeah. in the studio. That's awesome. yeah. It was just you know, it, it just happened organically and it's such an amazing shot and everybody loves this. Now go show us what, what Hilmar was just sending you. Right? So mm -hmm. what I liked about this was I like that he did it that they did it in the studio. I like that it was a frontal light. I like that you could see that there's the ballet bar in the background. So you can definitely tell that it was inspired by, but not necessarily straight white white background. And yeah, somebody right. sent if it this, to me. If this had been on a white background, it would be more of a dead right. ripoff. But the pose and the gesture and even the gold ballet things and the tutu, it's... But I thought it was neat because I talked to the guy who actually did it. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, my. And we kind of cross paths in different things in the, in the photo space. And he was just like, oh, my God, that was so inspired by your picture. He's like, yeah. I so wanted to be able to do that because I saw that picture and I thought it was great. Okay, and but, that's my wife right. and that's my daughter. Okay. And I was like, cool. But that's, that's but, right. but now, is he using it for commercial purposes? If well, he did it for himself, for his family? Good for him. I wouldn't have any problem. Would you have any problem with that? Someone? I probably still wouldn't have any problem with it nah. either. Because guess what? I use poses and compositions all the time from other people. Sure. Um, and mm -hmm. so I guess I, I'm not just trying to protect myself here. But I want to say, too, the person that I'm, I, the example that I'm giving, I really am, like, I feel the same way. I don't, I don't know where that line is. Like, I think it is incredibly difficult to say. Because we're saying, all right, 
if it was on a white background, maybe it's too close. But then the little girl's in a tutu, so that's different. And you know, it's a, maybe it's a different compression. Mm -hmm. So kind of where is that line? And if it's similar and is using it for marketing and saying it's his idea, is that wrong? Well, I would use the same pose and call it my own because I lit it and it's a, you know, I did, mm -hmm. uh, I chose the lens choice and I chose a different background and it's a slightly different composition. So I think that's, like at what point is it based on what you other know, people it's... think or how you feel about it or like where are those well, lines? Well, I think that there's a very obvious line in, in where that person turns around and says, this is representative of my talent at work. Like when somebody turns around and goes, you hire me, this is what you get. I think that there's yeah, and let's just say you let's, should let's, feel like at that point you should be like let's <laughs> let's use your picture or let's use the picture uh, that 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 Lindsay posted on her Facebook page, uh, and by the way her Facebook page if you want to see yourself is facebook.com, slash Lindsay Adler Photography so mm -hmm. you can go there and and while you're there hit the like button anyway so. <laughs> It, it, that was good. I appreciate you, it. That's you know good. how hard it is to, to maintain an yes. active Facebook page. Um, how about it's, this? Yeah, Facebook. That's a whole other discussion. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work. And so, you know, and you'll get good stuff. Anyway, uh, I want to take some comments here. But you know what? I think that's mm -hmm. where the problem is because RC, he, you just opened a big can of worms. Because if you look at what, what that picture says, and someone was going to hire that person and said, oh, they're so creative. Look, they have their daughter looking up, the ballerina. I want the person that did that. That's not who you're hiring. Or sees the person that did that. If you were to look at the, the picture beside Lindsay's and the other one and said, ooh, I want to hire. I love their creativity. How did they think to put the three things there? They didn't. That was Lindsay's idea. And I think that's mm -hmm. kind of where some of that is. Man, we got some great questions and they're pouring in. I want to get to as many of them as they can. I'm actually going to call somebody on the phone and ask them to ask, to ask number question number four. So will you guys take oh, one sure. through okay. three and then Tim if C I don't have uh, the answer? Tim C, now I'm nervous about using some of Lindsay's shots as inspiration. And I don't think that that's necessarily the point for that. No, it's, and see that's, and that's what I was worried about. And that's what kind of hurt me about a lot of the, the Facebook posts is I'm not out to attack anybody or out no. to say, don't use my photos as inspiration. I guess I would say for, if I'm looking at a photographer's work, I'm not going to try to get every pixel identical because then I don't feel it's genuinely mine. But that's that's me as an artist. I'm going to try mm -hmm. to add my own twist. So no, please, I'm honored when people use my images as inspiration. Like I did an editorial called Golden Goddess and uh, the person, they look like they're covered in gold and in a gold room. If you go ahead and do a gold room and a girl covered in gold, but it's not the same pose and it's not supposed to look like the same model and it's not the exact same styling, I'm honored by the inspiration that, that you thought that that was a great idea. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's why it's such a difficult topic. It, it actually like almost there are very few things that make me uncomfortable, and this is one of them. And, but but I think it it treads along the line of I don't I don't think that people as a whole have a good definition about we I talk about this in photography. I feel like everybody has a master at one point in photography. Everybody tips their hat to a master. When sure. I take pictures, I'm always constantly tipping my hat or making sure that I steer clear of McNally, uh, Gregory Heisler. Jay Mazel. Like, I'm always just like, if I'm shooting in that style, those are the people that I try to tip my hat to, all that kind of stuff. And they tip their hats to somebody else. And it just keeps going backwards and backwards and backwards like that. And I think that we look for certain amounts of inspiration from these things, oh, yeah. but we want to try to contribute. And we're always kind of dancing with how close can I get to it? How close can I get to the feeling? Or how close can I get to um, being inspired versus being... Uh, it's almost kind of like fake food. It's like all of a sudden mm -hmm. you look at a picture. I've, I've got a bookshelf full of books mm -hmm. that I go to, but I never go to them when I have to execute an idea. I just go to them when I'm because I like looking at them. So I try to stay away from it when, when I actually have to produce a picture because that's such a rough line to be able to, to, to you know, to to get to. And I've got one great example. Um, there's this photographer that I love. His name's Salve Sunsbow. He's my biggest inspiration, um, and so. I did a shoot, it's one of my favorite shoots that I did. Uh, it was called Heat Miser, it's white skin, uh, red hair. Anyway, so he's one of my favorite photographers and I shoot this, this image and then like weeks or months later, I look up and he did a, an editorial that is so similar. <laughs> it is all white, white skin and red hair. So everything's been done before and this, everything's been done before too. So mm -hmm. it's, I guess it's that, um, oh, okay, so here's a perfect thing. There's an ad that I shot um, and uh, this guy, his face is covered in red powder, in holy powder. And I looked 
And today in my Facebook page, I follow Steve McCurry as somebody that I follow. Yeah. A photo pops up of a guy whose face is covered in red powder. Now, he's in an environment. I think he, you know, he's in somewhere, Southeast Asia, someplace like that. Um, he's in his home. But I'm like, I must have known I saw that image. I must have known somewhere in the back, back of my of head, head that I saw that. And then in the studio, because mine was studio lit, three-point light, covered it. But I'm, I'm sure I saw that image before I created it. But I didn't even remember it. They're totally different. But it really surprised me how much I looked at this and said, wow, I know that I saw that before. I always tend to look at, and, and this probably sounds like a very, uh, it's probably like a heady kind of way to look at mm -hmm. how, how we're looking at pictures. But I always think of pictures as kind of like, wow, a, um, kind of like a finished sentence. Right when you when you look at when you look at the picture that you have with the three flowers, and you know the toning and and the pictures and the lighting and the expression and all that stuff, it's a finished sentence. the The color is a choice of word. The light is a choice of a word. And when you're out there teaching, you're not necessarily saying, and and, and I don't want to misspeak for you, but I think that I can take it that far. Where you're not necessarily saying, you need to say exactly what I say. You're saying this is how you would use light in this manner to get this one effect. Mm -hmm. This is how you would use styling in this manner to get this kind of effect. And you're kind of teaching individual words for people to learn. And at the end of the day, you're saying, now that you know these individual components, now that you know how to light, now that you know how to style, now that you know how to put together this concept, it's your goal to mix them up together and you come up with that concept. It's okay that you can say, this is my sentence. Like this was the sentence, and you can repeat it after me. You know how to do it. But at the end of the day, it, you got to kind of mix it up. You got to make your own voice. You got to make your own thing. And it's flattering to see it, but you know, if it's being used for commercial purposes, it, it could be rough. All right. Sorry to interrupt. So I, I, I have the, the photographer I want to talk to is available. I got to call him. Now we don't have him patched into our system, so I'm going to have to talk to him, tell him what's going on. He doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> So anyway, but uh, it's Cliff Mountner, and, and Cliff is one of the most amazing wedding photographers, mm -hmm. and one of the hardest. That guy shoots at least 52, 60 weddings a year. Yeah, he's shooting a lot. High-end stuff. He does really great stuff. He's a wonderful teacher, amazing photographer. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if I'm going to shoot a wedding, I always not only go watch Cliff's glasses, I, wa I go look at his portfolio for ideas. You're never going to get the same shot that Cliff has, because number one, I'm just not Cliff Mountner. The <laughs> guy's too good. <laughs> Number two is you don't have that bride in that setting on the church steps at this amazing place. Anyway, but but I'm going to call Cliff now, and, and we're going to answer. So the question was sent in by S.A. Richer or Sir Richer? Sir Richer. Sir Richer? Ah, I'm so bad at names. It's uh, Stephanie A. Richer. Oh, it's Stephanie yeah. A. Richer. Okay, so we know what it is. It says, Scott, what would you say to all the brides who collect Pinterest posts and say, I want it just like this? I want to see what Cliff would say oh, because okay. I'm just going to guess, but Cliff has agreed to, to take this call. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a break while you take the call? Do you yeah. want to do that? Yeah, if you want. Okay, let's take a quick break. We'll come back with Cliff Mountner's response to what do you say to brides that collect Pinterest posts and say, I want it just like this? Because they all Cliff, do. Cliff, baby. We're, <laughs> right we're live in the air, Cliff. Right. Hey, Cliff, we're, we're live in the air, but RC made us go to a commercial. I don't know why. Are we, are we going to commercial? Yeah, yeah we're going to commercial. So. Hey, Corey, we're going to that new pizza place across the street after work. You in? Yeah, I really wish I could, man. I'm under deadline with this book. I got to get it done. You're a machine, Corey. You're a machine. Well, you have no idea. step-by-step -step Photoshop tricks, type effects, extracting, textures, Hollywood effects, and really badass 3D. Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. Your mind will be composited away. 
fuel. Packed with practical tools and tips that will help you quickly advance your creative skills, these short ebooks get right to the heart of what you need to learn. Fuel Books, designed to inspire you. Hi everybody, we're back live on the grid. Lindsay Adler here with RC. We've got an, uh, a wild uh, question going on here, and this one, this one I just mentioned, but uh, I got to talk to Cliff Mountner, who is on the phone with me right now. Cliff is on the golf course. <laughs> I, hey, high five! He's taken the he's take the call and was willing to come on the show. So he, he's a great guy, and, and thank you very much. So I, I briefed Cliff a little. I didn't ask for his question, his answer yet, but I briefed him on what the thing was. The question from S. A. Richer, Stephanie Richer asks, "What do you say to all brides to to the brides who collect Pinterest posts and then show you the photographer, the wedding photographer, and say, I want it to look just like this?" So I want to relay to the audience what you're saying. Oh, you say put them on speaker. Oh, we make them put on speaker. Let me put you on speaker and see if they can get. It. Hold on. All right, go ahead, Cliffo. What are the chances people can hear me? Okay, not too bad. Well, I'm waiting for. Can we hear? Yeah, thumbs Great. up. You're good. Awesome. Okay, good. You know, Scott, this this happens. Uh, well, more often than I'd like, but it, it does happen once in a while. There's a simple answer, and it and it can be respectful as well, so you don't really piss off your bride. Um, when I get hit with the jumbo Pinterest board. Uh, we want images just like this. It's very simple. I explained to the bride that I think they're putting themselves in a bad position by developing these preconceived notions to an event that hasn't even occurred. And the reason they're hiring me is to come up with my own artistic interpretations into situations. And why would I want to go and emulate something else when perhaps I might even be, you know, be able to do something better for them than what they sent me? That usually gives them uh, an understanding that, you know, uh, giving me the Pinterest board might not be the best idea. So that usually cuts them off pretty well. Now, you also asked me the question, that from an ethical standpoint, when does emulation become copying and become wrong? Um, one, one thing happened to me a couple of years ago, very quickly, I don't want to take too much time, but uh, a photographer locally called and asked me, he said, hey, Cliff, there's a really cool aircraft carrier photo with the bride and groom in it. Hey, can you tell me where that aircraft carrier is? And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, well, bride and groom, they, they like that picture. They want me to make that picture. And my blood was boiling after this. So to answer your question, there is a great difference between emulation and inspiration and, quite frankly, just being a jerk. Um, you know, that guy was a jerk. Wow, that's that was pretty gutsy. To, I would never call you and ask mm -hmm. you that. Uh, that that's pretty wild. Well, well, Cliff. Uh, Street in Philadelphia. So I mean, you know, where is the aircraft carrier? I mean, you have to be kind of a knucklehead just to ask that question. It's probably down at the harbor. I'm guessing naval it's base. The Navy York. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, Cliff. Th thank you. All right, I will. Sage advice. Hugs from hugs from Cliff. Hi. Uh, so thank you for taking this call. Can I get a hug? And, and by the way, <laughs> if, if you use a sand wedge right wrong. where you're at, you will you will fillet wrong, that puppy wrong, right up wrong. by the hole. So, Glenn Robertson. <laughs> All right, buddy. Have a great game. Thanks a... for thanks for for taking the call. Bye bye. That was cool. Yeah. Cliff, Cliff was on the golf course, still taking the call, and he knows you well, of course. And and I adore him, but it's funny because if someone asks me where a location is, I might be like, if I did a ton of research, I might be like, oh man, I did all that research. Yeah. But I also don't call that copying. I just I don't. You might not necessarily want to share because you did all the legwork. But it, I, I, don't, I think they could create a totally different image in a location. So. You know, that's another conversation. Okay, can I have, I have my own story. Can I, can I tell you yeah. sure, real quick? Sure, All right, I, I, I'm going to let you, so I brought up this photographer on my, on my, on my computer. Don't show can it I, yet, all right? But I brought up this photographer, and this is one of my favorite fashion photographers. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay goes, oh, I'm friends with her, I know her. And I'm like, oh, great, because then you can pronounce her name. I have no way how to pronounce her name, but I, I brought up a particular shot of hers that I just love. This was the shot that introduced me to her as a fashion photographer. So she goes by Z-Motion. That's kind of her brand. So if you follow okay. her on everything, it's going to be Z-Motion. Um, she is in her early 20s. I don't know if you know that. No, I saw pictures of her. So she looked very young. She's and I in really her don't early like her now. 20s. No, I, I saw that. And, and this Amazing. particular picture. So I, I want to tell you what I did for this. Because I saw this picture. And, and number one is I, I love her lighting. It's so subtle. It's so nice. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I love the simplicity of this whole 
of her whole look and everything. I love the the model, the 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 the, the flower. I love the dress. I love everything. I love the background. I love everything about it. There is no way that I can go. Number one, I don't have that model. Even if I had that dress, I. I you, but here's what I did do. I went to her blog, and on her blog, she names the exact background really? that she used. And uh -huh. I love that background because I want to do something dramatic. I want to do something dark. I ordered that background. Mm -hmm. So that background, what's who it was from? Who, who, who's that background from? This is the the one that came in the box. I guess they all come in a box, don't they? That was yeah. the stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> anyway. I think it, it, it's, but on her blog, she did a breakdown of a shoot, and it was, and she said, "Oh, and the background I use for this is blank, blank, blank." And I was like, "Awesome!" Click. Here's the link. Bought it, and I'll, and and so tomorrow for for one of the looks that I'm doing, I'm using that exact background that she did. Mm -hmm. However, the person will not be holding a flower. They're not in that dress. It's not that hair. It's nothing that's going to go on there. But, but that is her teaching. Right now, if I went and did this, I I think it would be ripping her off if I did this. Yeah, but funny story. Yesterday, no, no one in here was on my set during yesterday. One of the poses I did was identical to that pose, and I'm sure I've seen this photo. So then it's like, no, of course, the styling and the dress and the light, none of that was. And it the doesn't same. look like the same photo, but no, it's it, the same but pose. it was the same pose. I know. So it's so, you know, yeah. But let me ask you though, Lindsay, mm -hmm. is, is that the first time you've had at that you've had a, a okay. model hold a rose in front yeah. of them? But. No. But but that's what I but you know what it is there's a lot going on. Take a look at this picture if we can't see it again. There's a lot for a very simple photo. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on here. Her her expression, the styling, the makeup, the it's and and even the composition. I mean, for an incredibly simple photo, there's a lot going on there. And so if you really tried to recreate that, it would still never look like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Beautiful. It's like, it, it's, oh, and, and her whole series is just amazing. Let me see if I have them in here. I have to be careful because she's got a couple of, a couple of shots New that are maybe, here. yeah, not, not safe for work. But this, this series, I think, and she has a, a shot from, uh, oh, well, look at that gorgeous. one. Look at that <laughs> one. That's, oh, come on. These are amazing. So much emotion. Oh, yeah. It's just, I, I, I'm such a fan. So anyway, but. But I'd, I'll do that kind of stuff. So, so now, let's say tomorrow I'm doing my shoot. This is not exactly how it's going to come down, but I have her background. What if I use Lindsay's two thing lighting I learned in San Francisco, mm -hmm. right? And then what if I decided to add another aspect of something that I saw somebody else do? You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like that's how you put together your, I'm taking this, I'm taking this, I'm taking this, and to create my your thing. Sentence. That's how we do yeah. it in, in music. Thing. Yeah, it's your and own thing. That's, that's exactly how we do it. And we got a bunch more questions. Um, Glenn Robertson says, yeah. would you call it recreating the image? Yeah. In, yeah, in that case, I would. And um, just to go to build off yours, when I look at a shoot, there's hair, makeup, wardrobe, lighting, Photoshop. Do you maybe have like 10 different things you can vary. So if almost all of them are the same, that's when I'm like, okay, you, you had so many things you could yeah, have taken you a different have direction. Yeah, you anything so, there. So yeah, I think recreating in, in that case okay. is... Mike Anatra says, where do you, Lindsay, get your ideas from? We all learn from others. Oh, I look at other photographers, for sure. But I do exactly what you said. I take bits and pieces from everybody and put it together with my own twist. Mm -hmm. Sarah, Richard, we did that one. Okay, Kurt Wall, bottom line, just do your own work. <laughs> I mean, and, and I think at the end of the day, I, I got to tell you, one of the things that... that, that I started to do for myself, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, is I, I, I've, I've never really been, I love what, looking at pictures, but when I try to make pictures for myself, I'm always listening to me. Like I listen to music more than I do um, look at pictures for inspiration. So that's, that's something that you could use probably as a tip. Uh, Paso, if copying another image may be part of learning, then maybe you should at least acknowledge the original. I try to do that when teaching. Yeah. Yeah. That would be pretty good. I learned this from, you did this from, like you're, you're very good about talking to people. And I think shockingly, not, not shockingly so, but I, but I think that you do very well at turning around a person that writes as much and produces as much and publishes as much. You're always very, very cool about going, oh my God, I just learned this thing from so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I just learned this thing from so-and-so. I think it's cool. I think it's well, a yeah, cool I, tip I, of the I'm hat. I am certain that I've, I've mentioned things that I've learned from you as well. But you know what it is? And, and I have people say, oh, you're name dropping. Oh, yeah, you learned this from Lindsay Adler. Good for you. I'm not trying to name drop. I, I think that, especially when you're teaching, if I, if I learn a lighting technique from Lindsay and then I show that lighting technique to someone else and I know where it came from, 
can I just go, I learned this from Lindsay Adler. I'm not trying to drop names. I'm not trying to go, I'm, you know. Yeah, sure. I, I'm, j I'm trying to give credit where credit's due. Now, here's the problem. So let's say that someone copies one, one of your work and they mm -hmm. put it out there. If it's not in an education thing, there will be no place for you to say, this is a inspired by Lindsay Adler or, you know what I mean? Unless you're putting it on Facebook. Facebook, you get to make a comment. But in your portfolio, you don't normally make a comment under the photograph, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it is what it is. So, uh, hey, so uh, uh, Ajna Adams, am I saying that right? Ajna. Ajna Adams is, mm -hmm. is asking this question. And, and, and uh, this is about, now this isn't our Ajna, is it? Yeah, I think it is Ajna. Oh, okay, good, because I'm thinking, I don't know that many people named Ajna. So anyway, she asked, I guess she's going back and asking about that photographer that took your, your mm -hmm. and they're saying, what does the photographer say? Have they been contacted? They're just, she's just curious. The, uh, the makeup artist from that shoot contacted me and said that uh, they were doing a model portfolio shoot and the model said that she wanted that exact image. So they gave her that exact image. So it comes back to the, yeah, the, but, tiff, but you know the cliff thing. So, right, with the cliff thing. But so what, 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 what that photographer could have done was going, oh, yeah, that's a great image. But I, I don't want to steal this photographer's work. Can we do this? Let's, let me come up with my own arrangement for the flowers. Mm -hmm. And maybe let's not use the exact same eye color. Here's you, a, know, you know what I mean? You, you, could, you said there's 10 things. They could have changed the post, the lighting. The angle, the, the lens. There's a million things mm -hmm. you could have changed the styling, but instead, and, and I think that it's kind of on the photographer to tell the client. And, and Cl Cliff had a good, he had a good point. It's like, and what I would have said to that to the bride would have been like, hey, you know what? That's somebody else's wedding. Let's make this about your wedding. Mm -hmm. Let's make something unique. I think mm -hmm. we can do. I did like what he said. I think you can do better than that. Like, we might be able to do something. Yeah, that was good. That was well so, so said. Now that, was really know, good. now that I know kind of the look that you're after, mm -hmm. now let's kick that it up I know a notch. You're after, let's kick it up a notch. Let's, yeah, let's make it amazing. One of the things I was going to say was, uh, and a shameless plug on the Kelby One side, uh, we have interview series that we do, and you've been interviewed mm -hmm. on that inspirational thing. One of the interviews that I just, I, I've watched it probably like 10 times, is the interview with Gregory Eisler with Mia McCormick. So they were talking to Greg about this kind of stuff, and he was talking about vision and technique and things like that, and he, he talked a little bit about what happens when you're doing shoots. He's like, it is common to have a mood board or, or an inspiration board yeah. or an idea board where they will have literally all these different looks and all these different pictures and art directors and people will sit there and go, I want that makeup with that hairstyle, with that look, with mm -hmm. this one. And an art director will sit there and go, give me this, 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 and this, mix it together, or just give me this one picture. And so what do you do then? When they turn around, yeah. what if, good for you to have, but what if like somebody was sitting there with that picture on a board and they're looking at another photographer and going, I want you to give me that Lindsay Adler picture. Now what? Well, that's what the wedding photographer yeah. was saying. Yeah. It puts you in a weird situation. Yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, it's on the photographer. What do you think? I, I, what I tend to do is shoot something that's close and then build from there. I, I will, I'll, I use it like this. I'll be like, okay, so we got that pose, but you know what? Oh, I have an even better idea. And then I switch it up and I kind of build. So I give them roughly what they want and then I try to add my own twist. Because um, usually when they say I want exactly that, they don't essentially mean every pixel for pixel the same. Yeah. They mean that feel, that overall look of that image, that's, that's kind of what we're going for, but they still want their own image. Like they, I, I haven't had anyone who said identical, go. What they right. really mean is I want a picture of a close-up of my face with flowers on it. All right. Yeah. We, we got we to gotta read the rest of these because we're, we're already over time. Yeah. We got to wrap up. Uh, so uh, we did Paso. We did Ajna. Alex said, when you're attending a workshop, it's normal that your images look a lot like those of the teacher. What's your opinion of using those on the web, on your website? Mm. Okay, so someone takes, mm -hmm. your, someone takes your workshop. Yep. You arrange the model. Mm -hmm. You arrange the styling. You set up the lights. And then the students walk up and shoot. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about a student where where you arrange the model, you dress the model, you style the model, you do, using those shots as this is a representation of what I can do? Really interesting. So uh, do you know John Harrington? He wrote the book Best Business Practices for yes. Photographers. Yes, I do. I, so, I, I think I have that book. 
<laughs> yes, I have the book, and he was actually the first guy I ever interned for. He's the first guy mm-hmm. that taught me all about business, and uh, he actually called me up the other day, and we had a long discussion about this. Um, I think a lot of times for for workshop images, it's meant to be a starting point. Um, it's meant to be a starting point so that you get comfortable working with models or or posing or whatever it may be. And how I often encourage people to use images from my workshop um, is take all that technique, re- use this as a reference. Go ahead, write down the lighting diagram, know exactly what's done, and then go home and give it your own style. Yes. You know, just give it your own twist. And I well, encourage them to do and, that. And the reason why, why we ask this is we talk a lot about, so F.J. Westcott, the wonderful folks at Westcott, mm. will come to Photoshop World and they will set up and they'll build a set. They, they get a, a great model, they get great styling, they do makeup, they bring in props, they bring in motorcycles, they bring in whatever they gotta bring, and they create this scene. Now, it is also lit with uh, continuous lighting. So it's lit with like spider lights, uh-huh. so anybody can walk up and take the shot. So you, you, a person walks up, they're walking around our expo floor, they look, it's all set up, there's a model, maybe a guy and a girl, he's in a tux, he's on a motorcycle, he's got her by one arm, they get this whole scene set up, or the famous shot of the egg and the person's coming out. They do really elaborate stuff. They do. And you walk up and you go, click, oh, it's a little too dark, click, got it. And you take that shot and put it in your portfolio. That means this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. But in reality, that's not you. That's Westcott. Literally, I could hand it to my eight-year-old daughter. She would walk up and get the same shot you do. It's not representative of your work. And so if you're at Lindsay's workshop and Lindsay chose the model, Lindsay chose the styling, Lindsay went to Dream Shoot Rentals and rented some... What, what do they charge you to rent from there? Oh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but, but you get these amazing outfits and you set it all up and you get the lighting and you've taught it. I think you're right. I think what your job is, is to... I, oh, great. I learned some great things at Lindsay's thing. And it's now you go and try it. Then when you shoot on your own, that's gold. Mm -hmm. That is what you can pull off. Mm -hmm. So even though if you took every single thing that Lindsay said to do, but you go do it yourself, at least you're, I can do this. You learn the words. Lindsay sets it all up and says, okay, you stand on this X and take a shot. That's not a representative of your work. That's the way I feel about it. But anyway, Uh, just two last questions we've got to go. One is actually a statement from, from Brad. All right. Brad says, uh, art directors and photo editors collect work they like and pull it for, from, and pull from it from ideas for shoots. And they share those shots with the photographer who is shooting. Absolutely true. They know they can't copy it directly, but it's definitely used for inspiration and even pull from their own archives and, re, and recreate previous images. True. You're kind of saying, this is the direction we want to go. We like this kind of stuff. We like this look. Everybody's looking at other images. Nobody sits there and says, I'm going to close my eyes. Well, somebody probably does, but they're way better than me. (laughs) They close their eyes and go, I'm imagining a forest. And you know what I mean? It's like they're looking at other people's You pull from somewhere. Right? All right. Uh, All right. And then our last question, Earthrock says, the industry is a commerce of ideas. Great work is originated from the idea, and the people who can produce original ideas will continue to produce great original work. Those who copy inspired or not, who cannot create original ideas will not survive in any industry. Hmm. Well said. That's pretty good. All right. So uh, we're, we're going to have to wrap things up. We do have a deal for you, though, before you go. And, and we have giveaways. So uh, Peach Pit always does a deal. 40% off uh, an ebook. This This ebook is Run and Gun Lighting Resource. Hey, you know, see the cover picture? No one's ever used blue gel before. Run and gun lighting resource, one light solutions for commercial and portrait photography by Nick somebody. Fancher. It's Nick Fancher. Nick Fancher. Thank you. 40% off of the ebook. Couldn't quite read it. It was just that at that type size where old people can't read. So make sure you go to kelby1.com, peachpit.com slash kelby1 and enter in the kelby1 code for you to get 40% off of there. He emailed me yesterday at Dream Shoot Rentals, and I had no idea who he was. So look at this come full circle. Boom. How does it come full <laughs> circle? All right. Giveaways. We are giving away a couple of books today. Oh, also, we're going to give away, we mentioned that we're giving away Chasing the Light by uh, Ibario Nix. Ibario Nix. And we're also giving away a copy of my Light It, Shoot It, Retouch It book right there. But we are also going to give away a ticket to Joe McNally's upcoming. I'll give away one of mine, too. So yep. McNally is going to uh, his next city is, I don't know, uh, Buffalo. And where else is he? <laughs> Buffalo and someplace else good. Here, no, see. he's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
I'm, I'll bet you it's Milwaukee and Buffalo. Milwaukee and, and Buffalo. Buffalo. Let's go see. Hold Let's on. Let's go take a look over Milwaukee here. Milwaukee and one Buffalo. Second. We send Joe to all the hot towns. <laughs> I'm going to go over here to Kelby One Live. All so, right. to get all of the stuff, make sure that you go over to the Kelby One Live website. Ooh, there, look. We're Kelby1.com slash live. And then go to the Power Flash Seminar Tour. Let's take a look at the dates Scroll and down. locations. Oh, you just go right there. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Boston. Oh, Boston burned. So, Milwaukee on the 24th, <laughs> Boston on the 28th, and then and Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. If you'd like to go to any one of these seminars, the Milwaukee one's like 10 days away or something. Yeah. All right. So, if you want to go see Joe in person, he's just an absolutely brilliant teacher just and one of the coolest guys ever. Go... Uh, just you can enter the contest. Also, can you? I'll, I'll, I'll give one away to my seminar. I have no idea where I'm going. St. Louis. I bet I'm going to St. Louis. Let's take a look. Of course, my track record here isn't really great today. Uh, Brad says yes. We're going to St. Louis because Brad goes with me in case I'm scared. <laughs> Kansas, You've got St. Louis. August 26th in St. Louis. August 28th Kansas in City. Kansas City. And then Houston, Texas, the George R. Brown Convention Center. That's where I'm going to be right there. To join our contest, go to kelby1.com slash webcast slash Contest. Choose the grid. Put in your name, blah, blah. It is important in the comments field that you mention, Brad, no. It's important in the comments field that you tell us which one of the prizes you want to win. It's one of the books or which city you'd like to win a ticket to see Joe or myself and uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, Lindsay, before we go, yes. where can people learn more about you? We know we your Facebook page, facebook.com slash Lindsay Adler Photography. Where else? Yep. Um, on my blog, blog.lindsayadlerphotography.com. I update that regularly. Look at that. I'm so stealing that. Okay. It's in San Francisco. Is it? Because Kathy Perupski has a tree like that in her front yard. What? Our friend Kathy, doesn't she have, it's kind of like that, right? Yeah, similar, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll totally do that. Yeah, we're there next. We're going to go there tonight. All right. What else? <laughs> and uh, you can find me on Instagram. I post a lot. Like, if you want to see pictures of my dog and my food, that's Instagram's the place to do that. If you want more business related, my Facebook page is the place to do that. Hey, can we see some of Lindsay's Im images here? Can we just hit portfolio right there? Over. Oh, yeah. And let's hit uh, go to fashion. And so for most of these images, I can tell you where I got the inspiration from, you know, and so that's the, the whole idea is I do know where the ideas came from uh, for a lot of these. And then some of them. That's cool. Oh, look, the blue gel. We were just talking blue about gel. blue gels being used. That's probably only the second time it's been used. That's okay. Right. right. Ooh, I like that. There, there was a picture on Pinterest with a girl with purple fabric on her face, but I took it a different direction. Made it more dramatic. And that, I just like red. So that was just... <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I just really like red. There was... Um, oh, I like that. There was an ad by... Or a photo by Ben Hassett that uh, he's a Vogue photographer. And he had that look. That's the one that I shot. And then I saw Solvay Sunsbow's later. Yeah. Hey, I, I like... I, 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 in your class, you were talking about how you pull the hair down over their eyes. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. I never would have thought mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, gold stuff. Yeah. And so those were the shoots that I said, Ooh. you know, if you're inspired by that. Um, That's this, cool. I just like red. So that one was just inspired by the moment. This was inspired by the tree, um, and it's back behind the museums in Golden Gate uh, That's, Park. That, this is actually a photograph of me. Uh-huh, I could see that. It's inspired by uh, dramatic, I don't Ooh, know. Oh, I like that. Oh, I love that. Thanks, I like clean, bold, and graphic That imagery. is really great. I love the hair and the styling, and wow, those are cool. Wrap it up, okay, I got the wrap it up line. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to your blog. Yep. We're gonna go follow you on Facebook. Yep. We're going to go to Dream Shoot Rentals, and we're going to thank you once again for being on here. Great show. As always, you are a wealth of information and insights to a world of make-believe. <laughs> I just sounded kind of dramatic. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Thanks to RC for joining us here. Thank you. Thank we you, everybody. We hope that Matt Klaskowski right now is enjoying Hawaii <laughs> while we're here. It's raining. Raining in Florida. Matt. Stinking Matt. Thanks to everybody for watching us, and uh, we hope to see you again next week here on The Grid. Take care, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Peace out. Lindsay Adler. Thanks.